Okay, so two days ago, it was announced that Mortal Kombat, the Bulgarian team, was disbanding yet again. This is, at minimum, the third time that they've disbanded this core of players. Now, I think this brings up a topic which I think is worthy of commenting on. That being just what I'm calling Bulgarian self-harm. And pretty much the way the way I like to phrase this is the Bulgarian scene is reminiscent of the North American and French scenes. Except instead of complacency and other problems, we have bad orgs and dreamers. No, not those dreamers, that dreamer. And it just seems that the problems that plague the Bulgarian scene are so easily fixed, you know. So we know that Bulgarians have skill. We know that they can do a lot of damage on the international scale. The old M MK lineup, wherein they were under efrag.net, under gplay, under orbit, this team achieved quite a few good results. They, at Star Ladder Star Series 12, they beat Fnatic and Dignitas in best of threes. At Acer Predator Masters Season 1, they beat TSM in Dignitas in best of threes. Um, let's see. Even at IAM Katowice 2016, they still managed to upset Envious in a best of one. So they've been around the block, and they've gotten lots of upsets. So we know that they can do it. But it just seems as if they're limiting themselves, uh, especially with the topic of Dreamer. Now, Dreamer has had a VAC ban since 2014. And while he is a good player, as we can see in his play, he is unable to play in many leagues still. Granted, that is changing as of, you know, recent with ESL and DreamHack, particularly uh, adopting EZIX regulations on cheaters. But this team decided to continue playing with him, despite being unable to use him in most tournaments and in majors and minors. And they generally used Punisher as a stand-in for those events. And this raises the question, the pretty valid question in my opinion. Is it worth it to keep playing with someone when you know that you won't be able to use them in the most important tournaments? Now this topic was also raised in regards to the coach ruling that happened in the middle of 2016. Is it worth it for many teams, so let's say that none of the tournament organizers followed Valve's ruling and they all still allowed coach IGLs, then is it worth it for a team to continue to use a coach as their in-game leader for all the other tournaments when they know they're not going to be able to use it at a, at a major? And for most of those teams, as far as the coaching goes, they thought it was not worth it. And so we saw teams and in-game leaders, teams with in-game leaders rather, rise through the ranks. And IGL's weight just increased exponentially. As you can see with players like Zeus and MSL and Fallen and the like. And you also see how Navi fell off a cliff after that happened. But 
the MK guys thought it was worth it to keep playing with Dreamer. They valued the friendship or relationship or whatever they had above being able to compete at a high level. Which is a not a terrible thing to do inherently, but it is holding you back. It is preventing you from doing bigger and better things. And after they for disbanded the first time, the at the time of this disbandment, the two best players from Bulgaria, Bubble and Victor, went to an international team. They exited the Bulgarian scene. Now how well does it look for your scene when your two best players leave? Based on internal issues in the team. That doesn't look good at all. Once they finally came back and they reformed MK, we had, we've already seen the rise of Outlaws. The team that had Cirque and Nikki One and Spellin and all those guys, they rose through the ranks and they were getting big upsets, you know, online. They were making it deep into qualifiers. And at this point, just at the point when they were reforming MK, Outlaws looked like they were the best team in Bulgaria. And Spy Leader and his team were not the best anymore, even with Bubble and Victor, under their new org of Imperial. Now, people caught on quickly, and they saw this Outlaws team, they're like, oh, this Cirque guy is good. And Cirque got poached. Not necessarily poached, but he was signed by NRG. Well, it was kind of a poach because there was the whole NRG Outlaws debacle, which is another topic. The, uh, yeah, that's another topic for another day. The terrible orgs from Bulgaria. But once Cirque left, the entire Bulgarian scene just started to, to fall down and just everything was going horrible. No one had a stable roster and no one was working together. There was no inter-team communication here to create a better team. Now, we've almost got this with X Outlaws, the team that Spellin started and got um, Nikki One and Bubble and Ships and Punisher. This team is approaching it because finally the Outlaws guys are mixing with the MK guys. And at this point, this is probably what needs to happen for them to create, you know, the best possible Bulgarian team. Because you've got Bubble and Victor, still two really good players. And you've also got now Ships and Nikki One, who have shown themselves to be very good as well. And you see them there you know, staying separate because of whatever political internal reasons and sort of holding them, themselves back, right? So we're approaching it with X Outlaws. We're getting there. But again, MK just couldn't find the internal, you know, success as far as the team goes that they wanted. And Victor said that he wants to stay with Dreamer. Now Victor's getting on the older side. I think he's 26 or 27 at this point. And he probably doesn't have many le years left to be a top Bulgarian player. And if he wants to play with Dreamer, then I guess that's fine. But we probably won't be seeing Victor at another minor. Even. Now, with Cirque being out of the scene and out of the question, it's going to be hard for Bulgaria to regain the success they had under 
with the MK guys. Especially with B Pro still in tatters. MK recently just losing everyone. That team, uh, Spy Leaders, is keeping the spot in Premier, in, in MDL, and playing just as a mixed team. And so we've got we've got these two teams. We have we have Prophecy, but we're not gonna really deal with them because they're having fun in the UK, wrecking on some Brit teams. But we have X Outlaws. They are essentially the hope of Bulgaria at this point. Here, this this might even be the the new video title. I was gonna I was gonna title this Bulgarian self harm. I might now title it X Outlaws, the hope of Bulgaria. Because like, this is the best we've got, right? And this team isn't perfect, right? In their recent results here, they lost to Namiga, the Belarusians, who, you know, are a good team in their own right, but based on the results that Bubble in particular has had in the past, I mean, this is, you know, not that great. They lost to North Academy, lost to Dignitas, they got blown out by Envious Academy. Granted, they've gotten good wins. They picked up good wins as well. You know. They took down Avangar. Uh, they've... I mean, they took down Avangar. <laughs> Not many other impressive results. They even lost before MK disbanded this most recent time. They lost to MK. So, I mean... It's just a mess. It's a mess. I'm just going on a tangent at this point. But I think this is a a topic that's worthy of being talked about. How Bulgaria, as a scene, has gained total players. They've gained more up-and-coming players that are good, in ships particularly. The scene has grown. At one point they had three teams that were relevant. Even if just online. Before we only had MK. Now we now we had we had we still have basically, but before MK disbanding we had three teams. Almost four if you count B Pro. And yet their international results have gotten worse over time. Why is 2014 and 2015 the peak of Bulgarian CS? That doesn't really make sense. But anyway, this is, uh, this is the sort of prototype, episode zero type video of Carbon Contemplates Counter-Strike, your generic ripoff of Thorne's thoughts. Um, I've got a few other ideas in the pipeline see if I can do anything with them. This one turned out okay. I kind of just sort of ranted. I, I had a general outline in my head on where I wanted to go with it. But, yeah. So, thank you for watching. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, I guess. Make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel. I know it has a lot of old cringe stuff on it, but I'm not going to take it down because it's, you know, it's part of the Carbon Dogma history. But I thought this would be an interesting video. I hope it's interesting and it's not just lame and boring and me talking about random shit. Because it's not random shit. It's the country, the nation of Bulgaria in shambles. Anyway, okay, I'm done. Goodbye.